Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another DC Multiverse video. And today comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys, because we're continuing on with San Diego Comic-Con 2023 week, with an early look at the upcoming Blue Beetle action figure line. Now, first and foremost, there is a bit of a mega figure in the style of a mega figure styled statue, if that makes any sense. But yes, this will be a unarticulated statue featuring Blue Beetle himself, Jaime Reyes, and it looks pretty good. I'm excited to see what this entails once it's actually out of the box. Blue Beetle from Blue Beetle, all over the box. Nice artwork of Blue Beetle from the movie. And of course, here's the barcode for when these start to hit store shelves. Now, over in the action figure side of things for Blue Beetle, we have Blue Beetle number one. Take a drink every time I say Blue Beetle. You'll be dead before the end of this intro. Blue Beetle himself with a couple weapons, couple accessories. And on the side of the box, you get the standard Blue Beetle from Blue Beetle. And on the back side of the box, artwork of Blue Beetle. My God. Yeah, this is going to be a thing. Anyways, here's the barcode for when these start to hit store shelves. As well as another Blue Beetle, right? Hope you're still all continuing on with them shots taken, but this is the battle mode Blue Beetle, in case you wanted to differentiate the two. This battle mode Blue Beetle comes with wings and extra hands, and it says it on the side of the box. You get the same sort of artwork on the back side of the box, and here's the barcode for the battle mode Blue Beetle. And any Blue Beetle with any battle mode, of course, needs an equally as bad bad guy in the form of a Red Carapax, and he will be the villain of the movie. As to who, what, where, when, and why for old Carapax, well, remains to be seen. As of this video, we have not seen Blue Beetle, so just keep that in mind, but he does look like a really cool figure. On the side of the box, Carapax from Blue Beetle, of course, and you get nice movie artwork on the back side of the box. Kind of looks like an Iron Man villain, right? Here's the barcode for old Carapax, but any new Blue Beetle movie, of course, Needs a classic styled comic book Ted Cord Blue Beetle to accompany him, of course. Right? So, in case you didn't get the first one, here is a Target Gold Label exclusive Ted Cord Blue Beetle. And it's a little bit different from the initial release. You see on the side of the box, this is being billed as a DC classic, which I totally dig. And you got Blue Beetle hanging out with Booster Gold on the back side with the artwork. And here's the barcode for when he starts to hit store shelves. So, like I said, if you're still around after taking all them shots from saying Blue Beetle, well, got quite the video in store for you. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at all the brand new Blue Beetle action figures from McFarlane Toys, just in time for San Diego Comic-Con 2023. So we'll go ahead and kick things off proper with the Blue Beetle statue. Now, do keep in mind, this is an unarticulated statue. And once you get them all out with all the twisty ties, you get three singular pieces. The first one being the giant flat black DC multiverse stand with two pegs on it. Not a whole lot to it, although I will tell you, this picks up fingerprints like no other. Even the prior ones didn't seem to react this bad it's fingerprint central for that thing. You get this giant blue beetle base. It has a nice sculpt to it. Of course, you got the scarab right there in the middle. And you got all the cool circuitry and whatnot going all the way around it. You got paint on the sides, but not the actual sides. It's just where it says blue beetle, if you catch my drift. Also, on the top, this is where you will insert the blue beetle figure. But a question for you all. What does this say to you? If, if you don't know blue beetle, does it say... Blug Boodle? <laughs> Blug Beetle? It, the E's are wrong, except for the last E, which does have that little E mark, right? It doesn't look right. It looks like it says Blug B-G-G-T-L-E. So, I get it. It says Blue Beetle, but it should have been done a little bit better. You got the peg holes on the bottom. That's going to fit on the giant black stand, which then leaves us with Jaime Reyes himself, which... He looks really good. They did a great job, number one in the sculpts, and number two in the actual paint for this figure. Everything stands out. It's very nice to see, but again, I will reiterate, there is no articulation on that. It is a very pre-posed, very old school, 90s art of Spawn, right? Classic covers, all that great stuff. So think about that when you have this in hand. 
They, big old pincers are a little bit gummy. Again, the legs, nothing moves, not even the head. But it is very cool to see. The pegs on the bottom, you see the peg holes. That's going to fit right on top of the base, everything else. Nice sculpt. I have zero problems with this. It's very well done for what it is. Now, one thing I will tell you, though, is... If this meets your fancy, then by all means. But if you're more of the action figure collector, the actual Blue Beetle action figures can pretty much match this pose. So you get a little bit more out of it, right? But let's go ahead and assemble this piece. We'll just speed things up. And it's pretty easy peasy, one on top of another, until you reach Blue Beetle crouching down, doing his whole superhero pose mode, right? So it does look good. Again, I'll reiterate. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. I'm glad they sent it over so I could give you guys a proper look, but it just really doesn't fit my needs. It's for people that maybe want a little something on their computer desk at work, but you can see the scalature between a normal seven inch scaled DC multiverse figure from McFarlane Toys. So it is a rather large statue for the $40 price point. It ain't too shabby, but it is a nice standout piece. And just to kind of show you with other previously released mega figure styled statues from McFarlane Toys. This one is kind of sort of in scale with the recent Superman. If you uncrouched all these figures and kind of stretched out their limbs, yeah, I would say these go together nice. So it's a nice conversation piece, pretty well done for a McFarlane statue. But like I said, while it's not everyone's cup of tea, perhaps these action figures will be. So the new Blue Beetle figure is pretty darn stellar and pretty darn comic booky while also being very movie. You get these blue meringues, right? Or whatever they're called, Discs of Doom. Very cool. They have a nice sparkly blue. The paint on all these figures, as you'll soon see in this video, very well done. He holds the discs really nicely. Perhaps they're alien scarab tambourines, right? Maybe they got it wrong. Maybe we'll see in the movie. Now, he does have the sword from the first trailer. That is pretty darn cool. I got to give it to him on that. Now, I like all the different circuitry as it travels up the blade. It's got that nice blue hue highlights all over it. Really does bring the blade to life. So I definitely dig that. And of course, he holds it quite nicely. One thing I will say, though, it's kind of awkward to fit in his hand. You just kind of have to figure it out. But once you do... Yeah, he holds it easy peasy and it looks great and you can pretty much recreate the scenes from the trailer. He also comes with a blaster, whereas in my initial news video when these were revealed, I called it the backpack. It looked like a backpack, I don't know, right? That's all I got for you. But again, very well done. It's a scarab blaster transmutated arm that will clip on and I'll show you how to do all that. It's pretty darn stellar for a McFarlane release. The colors overall just look great on the figure. Over and over, you can use this as a movie figure. You can use this as a comic book figure. It really doesn't differentiate a whole heck of a lot from the source material. Well, depending on which artist is drawing, of course. But it's sculpted to the nines. They really went all out for these movie figures. It's really nicely done. It's impressive. With some of the more recent McFarlane offerings we've been seeing... This is a nice return to form, I will say that. The head sculpt, the paint, the eyes, everything looks fantastic. It's like having your own little blue beetle on your shelf, and that's really all we can ask for. The articulation is nothing crazy for a McFarlane Toys figure. It's the standard ball joint arms, they go all the way up. The shoulder pads will work with you, they're a little bit gummy. He does have bicep, he's got double jointed elbows, he's got the wrists. Everything you can think of. Like I said, nothing that is too crazy for a McFarlane Toys release, which ain't all that bad if they can work on a few things here and there, of course. And again, what's really nice is that he has a lot of upper diaphragm and waist articulation, which again, something we've been asking for for quite some time. I'm happy to say that for the most part, yeah, you can get him in all the blue beetled pose that you can think of, and it's really nice. It really doesn't break up the sculpt when you're moving him around. The head portrait's nice. I really do wish you could get him looking up just a little bit more. It kind of stops right there, but you can arch his back and kind of get his whole diaphragm going if you want, just to kind of give him a little bit more look upage, right? The eyes are painted nice, the black, everything. The legs will kick up really nicely, right? The diaper does not hinder that. And while I'm at it, I will say the rubber diaper crotch piece looks pretty good. Now, in terms of the legs, he's got double jointed knees, and you've got rocker and up and down rotation 
for the feet. You kind of have to figure it out, but once you get the feet to going with the toe articulation and whatnot, yes, he's pretty darn articulated. So I definitely dig that. But yeah, like I said, just kind of figure it out before you go haywire and do something you don't want to do. But once you do, it's pretty darn cool. And like I said, you get him in all the different articulated blue beetle poses you want. Because right here on the arms, as you can see, it's not on this arm. It's only on this side. And you have that little mark right there, which differentiates where you pull the arm off. So it pops off right around the forearm, just below the joint for the double jointed elbows. It's got a little peg to it. And that's where you're going to clip on the blaster. And I got to say, that's pretty darn cool. I totally dig that. It works really nicely. It definitely form fits to one another. That's awesome. That's a nice accessory for this. And he looks stellar. So I am happy to say from the giant sword to the giant arm cannon, it's pretty darn cool to have this for a blue beetle figure on your shelf. All the different weapons and accessories really add to the fun of this character. And I'm hoping that it's very much relayed in the movie, right? You still have to see that, fingers crossed. Now, like I said, if you were to add this to your comic book line for Blue Beetle figures, well, I think he fits in rather well. The costume is not going to be your classic costume. It's not going to exactly fit with the Batmans and the Blue Beetles and the Supermans that you see in this. It's a whole new different type of character, but it's so spot on in the source material. I think it looks pretty good as is. And I will say this, though. These figures, the next one included, really could have benefited from a flight stand. We need to see more flight stands, McFarlane, because this looks awesome. Now, with this particular battle mode blue beetle with the wings and the extra hands, which now in kind of talking about it, you would think maybe they would have swapped the names. This one's more like flying blue beetle, where the other one would be battle mode blue beetle. You know what I mean? Because he's got the battle accessories. What is cool about this figure, though, is that he comes with a number of very cool expressive hands, like a pointing hand and a peace sign hand, or maybe he's doing the eyes, I'm watching you kind of thing. But these are very fun hands to pose your figure with, take photos of them with, very comical, right? And my favorite, the thumbs up. You save the day, you save the city, you got the girl, you defeated the villain. You could just give everyone the thumbs up. So I definitely dig that. Now, you do get wings with this blue beetle. They're nicely done. They're semi-translucent. They have a nice frosted look to them. They're very rubbery gummy. You're not going to worry about anything breaking or snapping, which I definitely like, especially on little pincers up here. Don't stress anything, I'm just going to say. But for the most part, you should be good. And uh, you get two wings. So that's an extra bonus. It's none of that one wing sort of deal. You get two wings, which will then hook in to the backpack. So on this particular blue beetle, right, same exact figure through and through, even with the arm, right? So you can actually pop the arm off. It's the same sort of deal. So if you want to swip swap accessories between the two various blue beetles, well, you can definitely accomplish that. So the articulation is the same. Everything's the same. But this one, the backpack blue beetle scarab comes off. And that, of course, is where you're going to hook in the wings and do the whole flying thing, and it looks pretty good, right? So again, sculpt, everything is the same, minus the weapons, accessories, and the backpack being removable for the wings. And just to kind of show you the difference, on this blue beetle, you're not gonna take the backpack off. On the other blue beetle, you can take the backpack off. So I hear what people are saying, you should have done an ultimate version, 40 bucks, you get the idea. You get two blue beetles for 40 bucks, you get two figures, you get various accessories, and you can swap between them. It's not too bad a deal, plus it's the cost of a mega figure anyways, but you do get the backpack, like I said, and you pop the wings on easy peasy. Now, I would say there's a little bit of a hiccup, right? Especially in wanting to move the wings up and down, which you can't really do. But when you want to move them up, right, as they go up just a little bit, the pincers at the top collide. So you can't really move them up and down. If any a nitpick which I think is kind of a design flaw a little bit, right? I would like a little bit more movement in the wings without having to worry about the pincers at the top, whereas the pincers 
should have been a little bit more articulated themselves, where you could move them around at will, and that would have been kind of cool, especially for what we've seen in the trailers so far. So once the wings are attached just so, you go ahead and get the figure and clip the backpack on, and really, it does look good. Again, it looks like it stepped right out of the movie. I'm very happy with the way this looks, but then again, I'm not happy with how you could move the wings up and then they collide into one another and yeah, it just doesn't look good. So really, I'm going to say it's more of a design flaw than anything. But with the extra expressive hands, like the finger pointing, and you can take accessories from the standard Blue Beetle, right? You can clip on the arm cannon. You can have some fun. But as I said, a flight stand really would have been handy for a flying Blue Beetle figure, right? So more flight stands, please with all flying figures. But again, as I'll reiterate, 20 bucks each, 40 bucks, you get the whole enchilada, you do get two figures, maybe give a figure to someone else. But the battle mode blue beetle with the movable backpack and the wings has a little bit more going on, but the other one has the weapons that you need. So I, I see what you're doing there at McFarlane Toys. But I gotta say this, Marvel Legends would have made like George Lopez and all the other characters you don't really want. You get two blue beetles, you get the bad guy, Kind of keep it short and sweet. I really don't mind that. Kind of saves on the cash as well. At least they're two really good figures and they got some cool accessories to boot. So I definitely like the thumbs up, the expressive hands. Really makes for a fun movie. Fingers crossed because I'm looking forward to this. Now, on the comic book side of things, we're getting a semi ish re release of Ted Cord. The original Ted Cord for McFarlane Toys came in a two-pack with his best buddy, Booster Gold. This version has equally as expressive hands as the other Blue Beetle does. So you got finger pointing and open hands and jazz hands and all that other jazz so you can karate chop Booster Gold if he's just been talking way too much. Or you can do the whole Spider-Man Blue Beetle thing, right? You can get them all bugged out and posed. It makes for some nice photography. It's very cool. Now, as with the prior release 2 pack, you do get another version of this Blue Beetle grapnel, basically. You can remove the hand, so he does have one blaster holding hand. There is a gold beetle shooting out of this one, and he does look great holding it. Of course, I would love for it to have a removable beetle shooting out sort of deal, but... Because of Warner Brothers, sadly, that's still not in the cards with their whole weapons thing. Now, this is actually a cool accessory. You get the Blue Beetle Scarab, and I totally dig that. That's a appropriate, like a super appropriate accessory for a Blue Beetle, and you can use it with the movie Blue Beetle figures as well. So if you got Booster, you can have Ted Cord saying basically, hey, check out this weird scarab that's probably going to give some kid Jaime Reyes superpowers one day, right? So the actual figure himself, it does differentiate a little bit, again, from the two-pack release, specifically in the head. No, they didn't give him the clear goggles again, which is a bummer, but through and through with the really cool bright colors this time around and a little bit of a different costume change, this is a 90s looking Blue Beetle. So you could have him in the Justice League with fire and ice and Guy Gardner and Bloodwind, aka Martian Manhunter, and the usual. Some of the lines won't exactly match up from time to time. You can utilize the articulation, make it move for you. He's got double jointed knees and legs and arms and everything else, the feet. You get the idea. It's the same articulation as the last one, but he just looks great. Now, just to kind of show you in detail, the prior release was more of a darker blue, which I totally dig this one as well. I just wish that this second release would have seen some clear goggles. I think it really would have made this figure pop, but I love the bright colors on him. I like the expressive hands. Now I gotta say, I do like the 90s head portraits. It's got nice paint, nice shading. Overall, it's just awesome. I love the way that that came out and he will go really nice with any doomsday that you got, right? Let the blorching happen. How Ted Cord survived that, who knows? Superman died at the hand of doomsday, but Ted Cord did not. Speaking of Superman, how about Flash? Maybe a Batman too? This looks great. The bright colors are so evocative of old school superheroes and what I think about and what I like. It looks awesome. That is an awesome lineup with all the colors and everything else. For some DC superheroes. But ultimately now, with this very cool 90s Ted Cord, what I would really like to see 
is a very cool 90s booster gold with some clear goggles. Maybe throw in a clear goggled blue beetle head while you're at it. That'd be cool. So high five to that. Now, with the mega figure, the bad guy for the blue beetle movie, and I'm assuming it's the bad guy. Who knows? It might turn out to be a good guy with the way movies and their villains have been going lately. But Carapax does come with some extra hands. And I believe I said in my news video, why aren't you throwing extra hands? There's a lot of space in that box. Well, he did. So I didn't catch that. <laughs> Hey, I can admit when I'm wrong, right? Fist to hand, open hand, you get the idea. Carapax himself? Now that's a beautiful sculpt on this figure. Now, I will say, it's definitely giving me Iron Man vibes. You look at that Blue Beetle movie, it's kind of like 90s Spawn. A little bit of Iron Man, you know what I mean? But I kind of dig the way it looks. I think it looks pretty fun. This sculpt is fun, I'll tell you that. He's got a lot of paint every which way. Really brings out all the details. This thing is sculpted to the nines. It's a giant robot, essentially, right? Whatever he turns into. I don't know much about Carapax. I'm not going to look it up. I'm going to wait for the movie. I'm going to figure out what he does when watching the movie. He's got pinless arms, basically, but not in the legs. The head looks great. Nice portraits for what it is. It's a helmet, but you get the idea. These shoulder pads up here, these Gundam Wing Pacific Rim sort of deals, you can pop these off. So they are designed to come off, and then you can pop them back on at your leisure. You really have to pull them off to get them off. They're not just going to fall off. It's pretty sturdy on there. But just to kind of show you the arm articulation, it will get hindered by these as much as it allows you to move them around. But still, for a giant robot, he moves around pretty darn good. It's pretty cool to see, to be honest with you. Nothing else moves on this. I do wish maybe he had an unmasked head portrait, something like that, right? You can see the neck, nice detail. You do get a fair amount of articulation out of the neck. At least it can look up a little bit, look down, all that jazz. You don't have to go too far with a robotic carapax, red beetle thing, whatever he's supposed to be. But the arms, they'll go all the way out. Now, like I said, just to show you how far the arms can go up without that extra shoulder pad, you get them all the way up. So it does hinder it in some way. But you got to see, what are you going to be doing that when you pose this guy out? The swivel at the elbow, he has single jointed elbows. Just keep that in mind. And I like how it's really hidden in there. At first, I thought it just swiveled. I was like, oh, no. But uh, yeah, just go easy. Know where the joint is before you start moving anything. Didn't have to heat anything up on this, so that's nice to see. But I like it overall. It really is a very functional robotic figure. I like the hands. The hands pop out easy peasy from fisted hand to open hand. Just when you're kind of moving the very blockiness around, it can kind of get caught up in the joints. So just be careful. Again, don't force anything. Learn how the figure moves around. You get a fair amount of articulation in the upper diaphragm and the waist, which again, totally cool to see, but he can really get a moving, that's for sure. The legs will kick out. The crotch piece is a rubber diaper, right? So you can get him going in every which way if you want to get him kicking high. You can totally do that. If he's wearing a suit, he just broke his leg 15 times over at that point. He does have double-jointed knees. Yeah, he's got pins. The pins kind of look like robotic things, so it really doesn't bother me. They go up and down. He will swivel too, right? Again, with all the blocky texture, it's a lot of fun to kind of figure out this guy's articulation and then see, wow, this was actually sculpted fairly nicely. It's pretty well done. So it's an excellent mega figure. For a Blue Beetle movie. It's really cool to see. Now, the scalature is totally spot on. I'm assuming, from what I saw in the trailer, he looks to be a lot bigger than the actual Blue Beetle. So I definitely dig that. He towers over Jaime Reyes. But if you get yourself a flight stand, which they should have included, you can get him into some battle poses with Carapax. Carapax can give him the old one-two right to the guts. Send old Blue Beetle a flying. But Blue Beetle, he's come back with his wings and his blaster. And yeah, he'll definitely be putting Carapax down for good. So the articulation's great on these figures. The paint is great on these figures. Yeah, they're definitely devil dipping on the whole releasing two Blue Beetles at once. At least change the head portraits on one of them, maybe an unmasked. Have that in the box too. But at least at the end of the day, we're not getting a bunch of characters we don't want and they won't be clogging up the shelves. 
And plus, with Carapax, if you wanted to add him to your villains collection for DC Multiverse, in terms of the looks and the heights and everything else, not a bad looking villain, right? It's kind of cool, so I definitely appreciate that. So, that will wrap it up for my early look at the brand new McFarlane Toys, the DC Multiverse Blue Beetle action figure line. And again, thank you to McFarlane for sending these out for the purposes of this video. Overall, pretty happy with this Blue Beetle line. Again, I'm very excited for the movie. I haven't been excited for a DC movie in a while, so it's nice to see. It reminds me heavily of 90s superhero movies. It's got a little bit of corniness to it, which I can appreciate. So fingers crossed it's good. Plus, I like the main actor. I did like him in the whole Cobra Kai series, so totally rooting for him. I hope he does well, and I'm really hoping just for an overall cool addition to the DC Multiverse movies. But you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Blue Beetle. Are you going to see the movie? What do you think about these figures? And of course, I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, like I said, San Diego Comic Con 2023 is happening this week. So stay tuned. We're probably going to have a lot to talk about. That's for sure. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.